Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, how to make your classes more communicative and memorable. Um, uh, today we are going to remember that you can join us on our network. Uh, we have our Facebook with more than 19,000 members, uh, our WhatsApp with more than 3,000 uh, teachers, and on YouTube, you can subscribe here. Uh, we are more than 3,170 uh, subscribers, and you can visit our Google site to teachers. So today we are going to remember some directions that you have to consider to for today's a webinar if you want to participate. First, please type your questions in the comment section. Don't forget that. The answers to your questions and comments will be replied by our, our guest speaker at the end of the webinar in the question time section. And during the live webinar, we will share a link for you to have access to the exit ticket which will be available for 15 minutes. Now it's time to know our guest speaker. Please, Miss Miriam Cordova. Can you introduce him, please? Hello, Miss Miriam, are you there? Hi, Miss Mariela, I'm here. Yeah, okay, good. Now, please introduce our guest speaker. Sure. My pleasure to present in this opportunity to this great speaker, Michael Navarro. Michael is a passionate language teacher and teacher trainer who is constantly looking for ways to enhance his teaching skills. He has taken different methodology and training courses, ELT, TFR, train the trainer, as well, as international examinations such as TKT, CORE, TKT CLIL, FCE. He is currently teaching adults and teenagers in a prestigious institute based in the USA. Michael regularly conducts training online via webinars and also helps educators embrace technology in their lessons. Today, Michael has an interesting topic how to make your classes more communicative and memorable. Go ahead, Mr. Michael, the audience is yours. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, dear Miriam, for such lovely introduction. Um, again, one more time, it's my pleasure to be here. Um, you know, as usual, I'm always excited to contribute to the ELT community. And um, yes, Today we're going to have an interesting topic. We're going to learn a lot. We're going to um, gain new insights about new teaching methodologies and new teaching strategies. So without further ado, let's begin. Let's see. Let me share my screen. I'm going to share my screen. Uh -huh. OK, great. Now, before we start, um, well, you know, this is YouTube Live, and the only way of interaction is through the chat box, or in this case, their comments, right? So I would like to ask you, can you all see me and hear me properly? Can you just write in the chat box? Yes, if you can hear me and you can see this picture out there. Let's see. Uh -huh. Let me know in the comment section if you can hear me and you can see me properly. Yes. Remember that this uh, workshop is about interaction as well. Uh, the comment section is an enriching um, way on how we can exchange ideas. Okay. Great. Very good. Yes. I can see many yeses there. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Excellent. That's it. Thank you, Rodrigo. Thank you, Sonia. Very good. Thank you, Miriam. Absolutely. Fantastic. Thank you, Fanny. Thank you, Keira. Very good. Okay. You can all hear me properly. Fantastic. So, Let's begin. Okay. Now, uh, I would like to start off by saying that um, when we want to create and engage our students, I always like to tell stories. And there is a 
beautiful quote right here, written by Peter Forbes. Uh -huh. So I would like to read it and let's see, maybe you can tell me if you agree or disagree with this statement or with this quote. It says, stories create community, enable us to see through the eyes of other people and open us to the claims of others. What do you think about this quote? Do you agree or do you disagree with it? What do you think about it? Do you maybe use stories in your lessons? Do you agree with this quote? Mm -hmm. Is it memorable as the author suggests? So let me know in the comment section. I can see yeses again. Very good. Nice. Uh huh. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you, Mariela. Thank you, Glenda. Excellent. Thank you, Edith. Fantastic. Very good. Yes, yes, yes. Excellent. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Stories, I would say that the stories uh, are memorable, right? They tend to be memorable. They motivate students and you can generate a lot of discussion. Mm -hmm. So I would like to tell you a short story. This is a personal story. I used to teach Sophia, right, in a previous um, in another language institute, I used to teach Sophia in the physical classroom, right? She was the type of student who was always paying attention to class. She was always participating in class. And then remote teaching started. And I could notice that Sophia um, was quite different. Mm -hmm. Sophia was not able to participate in class. She was not able to attend classes. And I could notice other things. She was attending online classes, but she was not actually engaged. Every time I was asking Sophia for her opinions, she, she was just giving me one word answers. And she was not even doing her homework. I could also notice that Sophia was multitasking during her lessons. So my question is, teachers, what would you do if you were me? Mm -hmm. Because Sophia changed from one moment to another, right? She was not that participative. She was not feeling motivated, right? So what suggestions, what ideas could you give me in the chat box? Yes, let's see. I want to read your comments. Uh -huh. So let's see. In the chat box or in the comment section, what ideas can you give me? Mm -hmm. I will read all, all your ideas. Yes, let's see. What would you do if you were me? Mm -hmm. So in the comment section, please. What suggestions, what tips can you provide. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Great. Very good. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Very good. Julie says, teacher, I would talk to her personally. That can be a nice suggestion. Absolutely. Very good. Nice. Uh -huh. Thanks, Julie. Yes. Uh -huh. Maybe I could have a private conversation with Sophia. That is a nice option. Very good. What else? Is there any other suggestions? I should maybe talk to her parents. Okay. Uh huh. That is a nice idea, Miguel. Okay. I can talk to her to her parents. Uh -huh. It's important to talk to Sophia first to know what's the problem. Amazing. Yes. Uh huh. Before jumping to conclusions, it's important to know um, more about the situation, right? And how can I do that? Just by interacting with Sophia. Absolutely. Thanks. Uh huh. Lovely ideas. I can change my activities, says Miriam. I can make my activities more interactive. Mm -hmm. Okay, I love it. Fantastic. Yes. Uh huh. Great. Uh -huh. Laura says, teacher, you'd better find out her interest through different activities, or you can simply talk to her. Amazing. Uh huh. Great. Talk to her. Talk to her. Uh huh. Change my strategies. Okay. Nice. Nice ideas. Very good. Okay. Okay. Now, 
actually, I did follow your advice. I, I changed my way of teaching. I started to incorporate new activities. And what's more, I talked to Sophia and she was struggling a lot. She was not feeling emotionally stable. Therefore, she was not able to perform properly, right? So you see the importance of getting to know your students. If you get to know your students, you're able to create right, the right conditions, right? So that you can teach properly. And this is what I did. Mm -hmm. I also did a needs analysis, and you also suggested that in the comment section. By doing a needs analysis, you're able to get to know your students in a better way, right? I learned that Sophia was a big fan of movies and also British uh, singers. So I decided to show to Sophia my collection, right, of British singers such as Adele and Ed Sheeran. And she was motivated, yes. Um, this, the discussions were so interesting. She was also sharing all the albums and famous singers that she likes just by asking her. So simple things can really make a difference. Very good. Now, in a previous webinar, we talked about the communicative approach, right? And just to clarify it, when we talk about the communicative approach, as you know, um, we create, in this case, right conditions, but we focus a lot on fluency, right? Communication involves the integration of different language skills. Learners learn through using it to communicate. The purpose here is that students can express their thoughts, their ideas. Uh -huh. Authentic and meaningful communication should be the goal of classroom activities, right? So instead of teaching grammar, because I must confess, when this all started, I used to have a different approach right instead of doing that i decided to change my strategies to change my techniques and i decided to do a needs analysis right and i could notice that sophia was learning effectively with this approach by creating these discussions these communicative activities these memorable activities that we're going to see in a minute mm -hmm. but let's go with the theory first when we talk about the communicative approach, we have or we divide the communicative approach in two categories. We have the strong form and we also have the weak form. But what, what's the difference? Mm -hmm. So if you are a, a strong communicative approach teacher, that means that you don't teach in this case grammar there is no teaching of language forms no pronunciation teaching you only make students interact speak mm -hmm. and students make an effort to communicate right mm -hmm. so in this case we don't teach grammar structures we don't teach vocabulary we just want students to interact with the resources that they have available. However, if we are into the weak form, the goal of language teaching is communicative competence. Uh -huh. But all types of teaching are appropriate, providing the goal is maintained. What is the goal of the communicative approach? What we want is to make students communicate, convey their ideas, and to be communicatively competent. Mm -hmm. So, in the weak form, we can suggest that um, teaching grammar is also acceptable as long as the purpose is not lost, right? Mm -hmm. So, having said that, I would like to ask you, which of these two versions do you use when you teach? Are you maybe a strong communicative approach teacher, or perhaps you are into the weak form? So can you please write in the comment section, mm -hmm, which of these approaches or which of these forms in this case do you use? Mm -hmm. 
So let me know in the chat box. Remember, there is no wrong or right answer because the form that you use is going to depend a lot on the student's proficiency level. It's going to depend a lot on the student's needs. And it's going to depend a lot on past learning experiences. So can you please write in the chat box, which of these approaches do you use? I can see that Mohamed says the weak form. Uh -huh. Nice. Mm -hmm. Very good. What about the others? Uh -huh. Remember, there is no wrong or right answer, but I would like to know uh -huh. which of these forms do you use? Mm -hmm. Great. Very good. Uh -huh. Nice. I can see as well weak form. Uh -huh. Thank you. Very good. Weak form, weak form. What about the others? Let's see. I use a strong form in Spanish. Okay. Thanks, Rosemary. Uh -huh. Okay. Weak form, weak form, weak form. Okay. Excellent. Nice. Mm -hmm. Great. I try to teach and use the strong form. Fantastic. Okay. Excellent. Nice. Uh huh. Very good. Okay. Yes, as I said before, there is no right or wrong answer, right? The strong form is well known as task-based learning, right? Remember that in task-based learning, we don't teach grammar structures. The purpose of it is to complete a task, right? And sometimes we do so, right? There might be certain limitations. For example, in this case, somebody mentioned in the comment section that uh, teacher, it depends on the students' levels. Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. Maybe if you have a student who has started learning English, you might be using maybe the weak form rather than the strong version, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you use the strong form, uh, students might, um, might be able to just give short answers and what you want or what you, in this case, uh, the objective that you have is to make the student speak, right? So it depends on the student's proficiency level. But again, you have these two versions, right? And the decision that, the, that you take uh, will depend uh -huh, according to the student. Excellent, very good. What about the roles, teacher? What are the roles that we have in the classroom? Mm -hmm. So when we talk about the communicative approach, uh, there are certain roles that we have to consider. We are facilitators. We are monitors, right? We have to create a welcoming atmosphere so that the students can speak, right? We shouldn't be judgmental. We have to give and provide the students with positive feedback, right? You need to praise your students, right? You need to give instructions. You need to set the activities. You monitor and you facilitate uh, learning. Mm -hmm. Very good. Nice. And this ideas mm -hmm, should be followed mm -hmm. because if you don't have a friendly or a supportive atmosphere how are we supposed to teach sometimes the students are shy they don't want to participate a lot they might be inhibited to talk and it is because we haven't created the right conditions right so we have to make students aware that making mistakes is part of the learning process Hey, teachers make mistakes. Trainers make mistakes. Native speakers make mistakes. We are human beings. We are not robots. We are not like Alexa or Siri or any other device, <laughs> right? We are not perfect. We make mistakes, right? We acknowledge those mistakes and we carry on. This is what we want. So create those conditions. If you create that atmosphere, let me tell you that you are doing a good job. Mm -hmm. And learning will happen if you do that. Okay, great. Now, let's move on. Somebody asked in the chat box, teacher, what can I do to create an effective and memorable activity? So I want you to think about it. What makes a communicative activity effective? Can you please give me some ideas in the chat box? When you design, when you create your activities, 
your uh, activities, your games, and, and so on, what do you consider? Mm -hmm. What things do you have to, what things do you have to consider? So give me some feedback, please, in the comment section. What do you do? Mm -hmm. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Dori says the ages. Absolutely. I agree. The ages. Yes. Uh -huh. Is there something else? The context. Okay, absolutely. Yes. Uh -huh. Very good. Yes, the topic should be interesting, should be relevant. Thank you, Mohamed. Absolutely. Nice. Learning styles. Thank you, Juana. Uh -huh. The activities have to be real. Uh -huh. You have to consider your students' preferences. Thank you. You are awesome. Very good. Role plays. Okay, that is such a nice, that is a nice activity. Yes, very good. The use of games. Yeah, very good. Nice. Activities that allow students to express their own ideas, opinions, and emotions. Nice. And this is what we call, Stephanie, opinion gap activities, which we're going to see in a moment. Very good. Motivation. Topic about real life. Real life situations. Absolutely. Very good. Nice. The environment, a real environment, excellent. Nice. Thanks for all those uh, ideas. First, firstly, uh, what I suggest in this case, and something that we have to do is to personalize. And you all mentioned this in the chat box. We have to personalize our activities. Personalization is key to success. Relevancy. You also mentioned that in the chat box. Very good. Our student, our activities should be relevant. Uh -huh. should be purposeful, right? What is the purpose of doing that activity? I strongly believe that an effective teacher is a person who can tell you the objective of any activity at any stage of the lesson. It's like if you ask this, the teacher, why are you doing this? The effective teacher is able to answer that properly. Mm -hmm. Number three, we have choice. Absolutely. We have to give students choices, right? Like maybe which of these activities would you like to practice, right? Or ask your students, what are your weaknesses? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Mm -hmm. Teacher, to be honest, I need to practice more reading. Or teacher, I need more practice on speaking. Give them choices, right? I also do that, teacher, I think I need more preparation. I need to focus more on speaking. So according to my students' needs, I can design my activities. Yes. Or maybe, teacher, today I would like to do this. Today I would like to do that. Give them choices and let's see what your students decide. Mm -hmm. Active listening. Absolutely. We have to be active listeners. We have to listen to our students properly. And students have to listen to each other, right? When they are giving their opinions. Unclear objectives. Uh -huh. What will my students get out of the activity? Will they learn, um, in this case, will they learn the grammar tense? If I am teaching the present continuous, Will this activity allow my students to consolidate what I've been teaching? So you have to ask yourself these questions, right? So before using uh, or before applying the strategies, before carrying out the communicative activities, right? Very good. Nice. Excellent. So let's begin. Now, we're going to start with the practical section of, uh, of this webinar. And we have in this case, communicative and memorable activities. Now, when I talk about communicative and memorable activities, what activities come to your mind? Somebody mentioned role play, but what else? Uh -huh. Apart from role plays, what other communicative and memorable activities can we include in this list? As I said before, the comment section is enriching because we can all learn from each other. So I 
encourage you to write your answers in the chat box. Let's see. What communicative and memorable activities do you incorporate into your lessons? Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh -huh. Okay, very good. Games, songs. Fantastic. I like that. Very good. Songs are memorable. Absolutely. Thank you, Linda. Fantastic. Nolly says, teacher, games. I like using games. Storytelling. Very good. Podcast. Mm, amazing. I've never applied that, but thanks, Melina. I will. <coughs> Dialogues. Fantastic. Debates. Very good. Thank you, Carmen. So happy to see you. Dialogues, games, songs, videos. Okay, role plays. Fantastic. Well done, teachers. Let's see. So I have here some activities that might be of great interest. We have icebreakers, information gap activities, opinion gap activities, critical incidents. Mm, have you ever used critical incidents in your lessons? Board games, get to know activities, show and tell, stories, videos, stop the bus. Okay, we're going to see that in a moment. Uh -huh. Very good. Okay. Uh -huh. So which of these activities are totally new for you? I would like to know that. Have you applied, have you used all these activities? Let me know in the chat box, or maybe there is a new one that you would like to apply in your upcoming lesson. Uh -huh. Okay, teacher, uh -huh. I can see somebody saying, teacher, critical incidents is new for me. Very good, thanks for sharing that. Uh -huh. Nice, very good. Uh -huh. Nice, great, very good. Bingo, songs, uh -huh. interviews as well. Okay, very good, thank you. That's it. Thanks for that positive feedback. Nice. Okay, let's begin. Somebody mentioned in the chat box board games. Now, I would like to explain how I use board games uh, in my lesson. Board games are amazing. We have all played board games at some point in our lives, right? Um, and what I like about it is that board games, in this case, can be fun, but they have an objective as well. If you combine, uh, in this case, the topic that you're teaching with board games, that can be memorable. For example, we have in this case a simple board game and there is a question here. Which one would the world be better without? Mm -hmm. And why? So this is what we're gonna do. I use in this case a virtual dice. Uh -huh. And in this virtual dice, I have different, or oh, in this website, I have different options. I'm gonna go with roll the dice. By the way, the website that I use is called Echalo a la Suerte. And I use this website to play this board game. What I like about it is that you have a virtual dice and you can roll the dice. You don't need to have a real one here. You can actually have the virtual version. So you roll the dice. I'm gonna roll it again. Let me put it here. And well, we have number two. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna move in this case two spaces. Let's see. One, two. Mm -hmm. I have just gone forward two spaces. And we have these three options. We have wine, money, and books. Now, remember the question, which one would the world be better without and why? Mm -hmm. So, in the chat box, so in the comment section, can you please give me some feedback? Which one would the world be better without and why? Mm -hmm. Can you please give me some feedback? We have wine, money, and books. Uh -huh. 
Let's see. In the chat box, in the comment section. Uh huh. Fantastic. Let's see. <laughs> Somebody mentioned wine. Okay. <laughs> Great. What about the others? Which one would the world be better without? Uh huh. So, which of these items would you eliminate and why? Uh -huh. Stephanie said books. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about the others? Wine, uh -huh. we have wine again. Uh -huh. When I ask this question to my students, we get into a debate <laughs> because my students say, teacher, books are important. We can't eliminate books. And I said, of course, right? We get new insights. We learn a lot, right? We use books when we learn languages. Uh -huh. I'm a big fan of books. Money as well, teacher, you know, I can pay my bills with money. <laughs> Uh, but teacher, if I had to choose one of them, I would choose wine. Even though I love wine, teacher, I have to choose it. Uh -huh. You know, and, and it's great because the students get critical, right? The students are more critical. They develop their critical thinking skills, right? They have to reason. Mm -hmm. Great, very good. Oh, we have different ideas. We have wine, 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 money. Uh huh. Okay, excellent, very good. You see, uh -huh. and if we were in a real classroom, I am sure we would get into a debate, right? Because we have different opinions. Very good. So a simple game like that can actually promote fluency practice, can promote speaking. Mm -hmm. And this is what we want. We want our students to develop their fluency. We want students to forget about their fears and just speak up and share their ideas right and of course after the activity we can provide the students with positive feedback constructive criticism and we can help them right excellent very good nice <laughs> miss melina says teacher i would choose wine because if i have money i can buy pisco sour <laughs> very good excellent nice um okay okay nice without money people would stop fighting that is an interesting point Karin. nice Thanks for bringing that up. Uh -huh. Money because we will have to change with goods and things we can create. Excellent, Carmen. That is a nice point of view. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Wine is the less necessary of the three, says Orieta. Very good. Okay. You see how we get into this debate? Even though we are not physically together, we can still make students uh, participate. And we can make the audience participate. Right? Very good. So let's see. This is an example of board games. But teacher, this board game can be a bit advanced. What about my elementary students? So I have a, an activity for elementary students and it is called getting to know you, right? So as you can see, this is another board game uh, but again, teacher, I don't have a physical dice, but as I said before, you can use the virtual dice in Echalo a Suerte, which is the website that we have here, right? And in this uh, game, it's exactly the same. Students are going to roll the virtual dice. Mm -hmm. And let's imagine that they have to talk about their favorite hobby. Mm -hmm. So students need to use the structure. Oh, my favorite hobby is, and then they express their idea, and then they have to justify it, right? Using simple vocabulary. Now, remember, we should also use scaffolding strategies. So why not use cue cards? Or why not provide the students with certain expressions like my favorite hobby is what I like about about it is and so on. So if we provide the students with certain phrases, it's going to be much easier for them to produce the language. Somebody mentioned in the chat box as well, the use of gamification. When we talk about gamification, we talk about game like elements right elements that we find in a game such as competition such as rewards such as challenges 
right? So I decided in this case to use a timer, as you can see. And this is what we call just a minute. So the student is going to speak without hesitation for about one minute. And it's a nice way to add that challenge, right? In case maybe the activity is easy for the student, you can add a challenge. And I'm sure it will add a fun factor to your lessons. It's going to help you a lot if you use a timer like this. Now, this can also help you with the FCE preparation, right? Because when we prepare students for the FCE or for international exams, they have to describe photographs. And they need to have, uh, on, or they have to express their ideas for about a minute, right? So it's also for uh, fluency practice, right? And for accuracy, perhaps. Mm -hmm. So you see, there are endless ways on how you can make use of one simple activity. So let me know in the chat box, what are your thoughts on this? Let's see. Yes, I can see comments like, cool, thank you, Edson. Mm -hmm. Very good, nice. It's a nice activity, right? Very good. Now, Rosemary says, teacher, how can I create board games uh, in this case? To be honest, um, Rosemary, I am not a designer. However, I am trying to, to uh, improve my skills on that. But something that you can do is simply to go to Google you search on board games ESL and you will see thousands of PDFs, right? That are free to use, right? You just have to search on board games ESL or English board games and you will have access to thousands of board games like this, right? So I haven't created this board game. It's just, um, a PDF that I could download in a free website, right? Um, and just by searching on, on that, you can easily have access to it. Mm -hmm. Great, very good, fantastic. So let's move on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, um, another activity that I love incorporating is this, information gap activities. When we talk about information gap activities, um, let me read the definition for you so that we can have a clear understanding. We have information gap activities require students to speak and to practice teamwork, working with their classmates to acquire the missing information. So that means that the students need to work together to fill the gap. Mm -hmm. uh, these information gap activities promote collaboration. Right? So students have to work together to complete the activity. Let me give you one example. We have a spot the difference. Uh -huh. I love spot the difference. This is a simple game that you can do um, in a Zoom session, right? And we have this. So as you can see, I am showing, I am gonna show to my students two different pictures. A student A has one picture and a student B has a different picture, right? Now, a student A has to describe the picture to a student B. And a student B has to describe the picture to a student A. And they will notice that there are things that are not similar. For example, uh, in my picture, I can see a girl whose nose is blue. Whereas in my picture, or in the first picture, I can see a girl as well whose nose is pink. Teacher, we've spot one difference. You see? So there is a reason to communicate. Mm -hmm. And you can do this with other pictures. There are se several pictures on Google, right? Uh, what else? Another example of an information gap activity is find someone who. And we have all done that. Find someone who uh, has a pet. Find someone who is a teacher, right? Etc. Right? So students need to communicate. They need to work collaboratively so that they can close the gap or fill the gap. Mm -hmm. 
Great. That is an information gap activity. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So we have find someone who has spot the difference, and there are many other activities. Yes. But the reason is that students have to work together. If you create that atmosphere, let me tell you that students will effectively work in cooperation. Another gap activity is this. We have opinion gap activities, and this is what uh, this is what somebody mentioned. Teacher, when we talk about opinion gap activities, we talk about, in this case, um, activities in which students can express their thoughts and ideas and feelings. Now, I cannot see you, but I can ask you this question. Last class, I did this with my students. Tell me where you're sitting, especially with the ones who don't have the cameras on, right? So I would like to ask you, I said, I would like to ask you students, tell me where you're sitting. And I give them different options, right? Are you maybe in the living room? Are you maybe in the bathroom? Are you in the kitchen? Mm -hmm. And then we had a discussion. What is the best place to focus on your online classes? And this was an amazing question because we all, or all my students gave different opinions. Some students said that the best place to focus on your online classes is basically the bedroom. Others said the kitchen. Others said the bathroom. <laughs> and they had to justify their ideas. The student who said the bathroom uh, said that because, uh, unfortunately, his family um, makes a lot of noise. And the only place where he can concentrate is the bathroom. And that's why he said that. <laughs> and that's why he was not able to turn on the, the camera. I know it was funny, but at the same time, he was able to open up and just, you know, to justify their opinions. So it was really good. So I would like to ask you, what about you teachers? Tell me where you're sitting and what is the, the best place to focus on your online classes? Ricardo says, teacher, I am sitting in the living room. Thank you, Ricardo. Very good. Thanks for sharing that. Uh -huh. Dining room. Ilda says, the dining room. Uh -huh. Let's see. What else? What else? What else? What other ideas do we have? What about the rest? Uh huh. Very good. The living room, says Betty. Thank you, Betty. Mm -hmm. Very good. You see, it's amazing. Yes, it's amazing. And the idea is that you can keep up the conversation, right? So there you are, an opinion gap activity. Another example of an opinion gap activity uh, can be debates. And somebody also mentioned that. Teachers, I love using debates. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love having debates in class. I think debates can actually help students to be more critical right they can also improve their vocabulary and boost their confidence and they can also use different conversation strategies right for example this is one um activity that i did right with my students so we have different controversial contentious issues is a university degree necessary to get a good job should mobile phones be banned in the schools and many other, you know, statements or questions. The most important thing was that my student was able to use the conversation strategies. I was preparing this student for the FCE. So I wanted my student to make use of the of these conversation strategies, of these expressions to give opinions. And with it, a simple activity like this. Uh -huh. And you can see the instructions here. A student makes a statement. Then another student responds with a conversation strategy in a stating ideas or opinions. Later, another student makes another statement and so on until everyone in class has participated. For example, if we have, is it important to learn a second language in school? Let's imagine that we have chosen this topic. So I'm going to start, but 
before I start, I have to use a conversation strategy. So I'm going to say, you know what? Mm -hmm. Learning languages in, in school can be crucial, especially if you want to travel around the world or if you want to increase your career prospects. Then another student needs to continue the idea using another conversation strategy. In my mind, and then the student continues with the idea. In my mind, learning a second language in school can be a great help because you are able to broaden your horizons and you can be more open-minded. Then another student uses a different conversation strategy, as far as I'm concerned, and that student gives another idea, and so on. So it was a nice way to collaborate, right? You could hear different perspectives. And what's more, my students were using different conversation strategies. Mm -hmm. So it's a nice way, right, to put it into practice. Mm -hmm. Great, very good. Okay, so what do you think about this? What do you think about debates? Mm -hmm. Let's see. And let me read your comments here while you're typing. Um, I can see Carmen says, teacher, my, the best place to focus on an online class is the bathroom because it's quiet and I have so much privacy. Uh -huh. I can see some other comments there, the living room. Very good. Okay. I guess you love the previous activity, right? I can see so many comments here. Very good. Okay. Great. But as I said, debates, using debates can be good, right? Now, you need to you can also create debates for pre-intermediate, right? And maybe you can give them an easy topic to debate, right? So remember that you have to consider the student's proficiency level. Mm -hmm. And remember, try to give them some phrases and useful vocabulary. Don't expect the students to use all that language. You have to be a facilitator. You have to provide them with the language, okay? Very good, nice. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your comments, let's see. Let's continue here. I also mentioned in the in a previous slide, I mentioned that another activity that I love using is stop the bus. Now, I love stop the bus, and the equivalent in Spanish is tutti frutti, right? <laughs> in English, they call it stop the bus. Now, have you played tutti frutti? Uh, at a school? Let me know in the comment section. I guess we're all familiar with it. We're all familiar with Stop the Bus or Tutti Frutti. Uh -huh. Yes. Now, in case you don't know, no problem, never mind. But let me explain you. So basically, um, you have to grab a piece of paper, right? And you have to write different categories, such as name, surname, last name, uh, animal, country, and so on. And you have to, somebody mentions a letter, and those students have to write a word with that letter. Mm -hmm. That word should start with that letter that you have given. For example, if I say letter A, the students have to come up with a word that starts with letter A. Mm -hmm. Now, in an English class, you can modify it, you can adapt it. Instead of telling your students to write a fruit or maybe a name, why not uh, write maybe an adjective? Why not write a verb? Why not write an uncountable noun, a countable noun? English girls' name or English boys' names, for example, if you want to make it easier for uh, elementary students. So it's a nice way. And again, we're applying gamification. Remember, gamification is when we incorporate all these game-like elements into a non-game environment. Uh, so students get rewards, right? Points in this case. And we have here one point per correct answer, two points per answer nobody else has found. You see? Uh -huh. So it's a nice way to put it into practice, right? Mm -hmm. And of course, you can modify it. 
this is just an example. Maybe you want to include idiom that starts with one letter. I don't know, a phrasal verb that starts with that specific letter. Um, maybe a noun, an adverb, right? Different parts of speech. It's up to you, right? But you have to think first um, if the level or if the complexity of this activity is appropriate for your students, right? Great. Very good. Mm -hmm. Oh, Rosa, thanks for sharing that. I learned something new today. Rosa says that in Mexico, this is what we call basta. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> in Peru, we call it tutti frutti. In Mexico, we call it basta. Thanks, Rosa. Thanks for sharing that. Very good. <laughs> nice. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you so much. So let's move on. Let's see. What else can we include? I would like to move on here. Somebody also mentioned teacher videos can be amazing, can be of great help, right? So in this case, I have a question for you. What are the benefits of using videos in your lessons? Can you please provide me with some feedback? What are the benefits of using videos in your lessons? Why should we use videos in class? Mm -hmm. Very good. Nolly says, teacher, because if we incorporate videos, the students are able to improve their pronunciation. Nice. They have exposure to authentic language. Thank you, Nolly. Yes, absolutely. Very good. New vocabulary, motivation. Videos can motivate the students. Aha, very good. Excellent. Thanks for sharing that because the students have exposure to different accents. Yes, and that's true. Sometimes the students believe that, um, that there are only two types of accents or two types of English, the American English and the British English. But there are more accents or more English speaking countries, right? Such as New Zealand, Australia, right? Mm -hmm. There is also a Scottish accent, an Irish accent, and so much more, right? Excellent. Very good. Absolutely. That can be a benefit. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes, very good, Elder. Yes, students can uh, improve their intonation, their pronunciation, to practice pronunciation, to engage students, to create interest. Very good. Nice. Uh -huh. Excellent, Marines. Absolutely. You expose the students to native speakers. Yes, so that is what we call authentic language, right? Real language. Absolutely. Very good. You encourage students to improve their pronunciation. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay, so we're going to watch a video in this case. Mm -hmm. And let's see. Okay, but before we start with the video, something that we have to bear in mind is that we need to create interest. Mm -hmm. This is a pre viewing strategy. I want to create interest before I show the actual video. So I show these questions to my students. What can you observe? What can you see? What is happening in the picture? And I even ask my students to create uh, a monologue, right? Or use a sentence. And this is question number three. Why might the woman be saying? Can you come up with an idea? Can you write in the comment section? What might the woman be saying, teachers? How does she feel? Somebody says, teacher, she's calling somebody. Okay, yes, she's calling somebody. But why? By asking those questions, you're creating interest and you're making students, you know, um, be attentive to what you're saying. They pay attention to you, right? So teachers, can you please write your predictions? What might the woman be saying and what is happening in the picture? How does she feel? 
Aha, very good, Shirley. Shirley says, teacher, she might say help. Okay. Uh huh. Nice. Uh huh. Very good. Mm hmm. Yes. Okay. They infer, they deduce, absolutely. Yes. They speculate as well, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a good way to give them some, pra some phrases as well, right? The woman might be saying, right, perhaps, maybe, I might be wrong, but. So you give them all these expressions so that they can communicate. Maybe she has an emergency. Thank you. Thank you, Isabel. She's calling for help. She's scared. <gasps> okay. Uh huh. She might be feeling sad. Very good. She's nervous. She's asking for help. She's scared. She's afraid of something. She's crying. SOS, says Mohammed. Mm -hmm. Okay. You see? Very good. Nice. Okay. We're going to watch a video. Uh -huh. And let's check if your ideas are correct. Let's see. Let me put it here. Now, in order to do that, I am going to use my headphones so that you can use or you can hear the sound properly. Let's see. Okay. Now, give me just a second. I'm going to play the video. Okay. Now, I would really appreciate if you could tell me uh -huh, uh, if the audio is okay. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Give me just a second. It's okay, Michael. Yes? Can, could you hear that, Mariela? Is, is yes, yes, okay? yes, yes. It's okay. Thank you so much, Mariela. I appreciate it. Okay. Nice. Okay. So, teachers, you are going to watch the video. I am going to stop the video at some point. But you're going to answer only one question. Only one. You are going to tell me, and you're, you will answer this question. Let me put it here. Who is the ghost? I know, it sounds scary. <laughs> Why are you asking me that? Okay, we will see. But you have to tell me, you have to answer that question. Who is the ghost? That's it. Mm -hmm. Let's watch the video now. And don't forget, as soon as I stop the video, you are going to answer to this question. Who is the ghost? That's it. Okay, so the instructions are clear. Let's begin. Let's see. I will stop the video right there. Mm -hmm. And now <laughs> I can see many ghost emojis out there. <laughs> Thank you, Ricardo. Thanks for sharing that. Okay. Yes, Melina, that song was part of the video. So I have stopped the video. And now I would like to hear your answers. Who is the ghost? Who is the ghost? Who is the person who did all of that? Mm -hmm. 
Melina says, Teacher Regis, it's the owner of the house. A spirit, says Hilda. I can find it, says Ricardo. Mm -hmm. A dead person. Okay. I can see a lot of, oh my God, right there. <laughs> Don't worry, I will show you. I will show you the, the, the video. Don't worry. But first, you need to write your ideas. Who is the ghost? Uh -huh. Carlos says her husband. Okay. Uh huh. Interesting. Maybe the woman is just dreaming. Okay. I've never thought that. Okay. Mm, that is a new idea. Very good. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. So let's see. Let's see, teachers. I'm gonna play the video and let's figure out. Let's find the answer. Who is the ghost? Let's see. I guess you could see the purpose there. Let me put it here. Let me read it for you. So as you can see, and, and, and when, when, you, when you show this part to the students, the students are like in awe, they are surprised. Oh, teacher, it was, it, was, it was her husband, right? And they see the purpose of the video. And I ask one student usually to, to read what he says. Uh, I will read it for you. Domestic abuse is real, even if it's not always visible, right? And, and with this video, uh, we get into different, you know, debates, discussions, in this case, about domestic abuse, right? So this video was a nice lead-in, right? I used this video as a lead-in so that I could start my activity, I could start my lesson. Yes, connected to abuse, to crimes, right? And yes, this is the result. Uh -huh. What do you think about it? What do you think about the video? Yes. Were you also surprised when you saw the man right there? Let's see. Uh -huh. Very good, Mohammed. Violence against females. Exactly. Yes. Uh -huh. Great. Yes, I use this video with teenagers, with adults, right? Because we, uh, they were able, you know, to express their ideas. The topic was also suitable and appropriate for them, right? And um, this video led to amazing discussions, right? Mm -hmm. Very good. Fantastic. Nice. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yes. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, you see, so a simple video can motivate the students, can create interest, right? And I can see all the interest in the comment section. I can see all the emojis, all the ideas. So fascinating. You did a nice job. Well done. Excellent. So having said that, let's begin. Now I'm going to change my, I'm going to change the microphone and let's continue. Okay. Great. So let's move on. Let's continue here. Yes. Uh -huh. And thanks for the positive feedback. Very good. Now, another activity, and this is one of the last activities that we are going to do. Another activity is this. Critical incidents. And... Um, I could see that many of you were not familiar with critical incidents. That's okay. For example, this year I learned what a critical incident is. So let me give you a situation. Okay. Let's do this example all together. Mm -hmm. Now, focus on this situation. You need to focus here. I will read it for you. Kate has been invited to a wedding. And she was planning on buying the happy couple a gift. 
a present. But the couple announces that if guests wanted to give them a gift, they would prefer money. Kate feels very uncomfortable with this and decides to buy them a salt and pepper shaker instead. Teacher, what is a paper, a pepper shaker? There you are, you have the pictures. A salt and pepper shaker. Now, as you can see, there is a situation here. Uh -huh. I provide my students with the context and I want my students to analyze the situation. And I ask these questions to my students. What's the problem in this situation? What would you do if you were Kate? What I like about English teachers in Peru is that we have teachers from different countries. So let's focus on question number three. In your culture, is it acceptable to give money as a gift? Is it appropriate to do so? Let me know in the comment section. What are your thoughts on that? Is it acceptable to give money as a gift? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice. <laughs> Carlos said, this is an incompatible couple. Uh-huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, is it acceptable? Yes, it is acceptable. Uh-huh, okay. Uh-huh, nice. Now, in my case, I teach students who come from different backgrounds. I teach students who are from Japan, who are from China, and also Latin uh, students. And when I ask this question to my students, some students said, teacher, how is that possible? Like, is, it's completely inappropriate to give money as a present. Whereas my Chinese students said, teacher, that's completely normal, right? Actually, that is part of our wedding traditions. You see? So a critical incident like this is basically a situation. It's a brief description of a situation. It contains conflict, a misunderstanding, or a problem. And it allows students to see the world from different lenses, right? So students are more open-minded. Maybe the traditions that you have might be badly seen in other areas, in other countries, or might not be acceptable in other countries. Because we all have different costumes, we all have different traditions. But when you create this kind of situations, this kind of um, critical incidents, students are more aware of the variety that we have in terms of culture. Mm -hmm. And that is the purpose of using a critical incident. Now, why should we use it? Because students are able to express strong opinions, to express their ideas. It's like an opinion gap activity. Students share their ideas, they share their thoughts, right? And it's a nice way to interact, to see different perspectives, to be more understanding, to be more open-minded. Let me give you another situation and let me read it for you. Uh -huh. This is one critical incident that I found thanks to Chia Swan, who is a passionate trainer that I do follow. And I would like to share with you a critical incident. Um, so let me put it here. We have another critical incident. Now, when I show this picture to my students, they are like surprised, especially my teenagers. Like I ask my students, who are the people in this photo? What are they doing? Mm -hmm. Can anyone tell me who are the people in this photo? And where are they from? Are they from the same country? Do they come from different backgrounds? What do they do for a living?
-hmm. Great. Absolutely. Very good, Mohammed. Yes, a critical incident is similar to problem solving. I would say yes, it is critic is it is uh similar to a problem solving, but here the purpose of a critical incident is that you give a situation to the students. Students have to, in this case, uh, evaluate it, they have to analyze it, similar to problem solving, but it's more about culture, right? You give, in this case, the, um, a context, like a conflict, right? A cultural conflict, and the students have to think about it. They have to think deeply about that. Mm -hmm. Great. Yes, I can see in the chat box that, uh -huh, thank you, Senior. Senior says, Yes, teacher, these people come from different cultures, they are from different countries, they are talking. Ah, somebody mentioned, teacher, uh, they are holding hands. Mm -hmm. Great. And that's why my students, especially the teenagers, my, teen my teenage students are surprised. Teacher, they are holding hands. Why are they holding hands? And then I ask them, do you think that they are romantically involved? So they have to think about it. Teacher, I don't think so. And then I give them this situation. Let me read this situation for you. Soon after I met Salim, I said I was going to the conference hall. And he said he would come with me. He then held my hand and started walking. I didn't know what to do. And so I let him hold my hand until we arrived at the conference hall. It felt very strange. You have the critical incident. You have provided your students with a context, with a conflict, with a misunderstanding, right? A cultural shock, perhaps, for some people. And then you want to generate discussion. So I ask my students, what would you do if you were in that situation? And I give my students different options. What would you do? And I have, in this case, we have four options, right? So I ask my students to read these options and to choose only one answer. But teacher, what if the answer is not there? You can also suggest an answer. What would you do if you were there? Mm -hmm. So can you please, teachers, can you please give me some feedback? What would you do if you were in that situation? Would you continue holding hands with Salim? Would you pull his hand away and tell Salim you don't feel comfortable holding hands? Perhaps you would make an excuse to stop holding hands. Or maybe you would talk to Salim about the different ways people greet each other. So what would you do in that situation? Let's see. Uh-huh, there you are. You see, Fanny says, oh, it, it, teacher, it might be a strange situation in our country. I did this activity with the students who are from other backgrounds, and for them, it's totally normal to hold hands with a man, right? Mm -hmm. You see, uh, however, Latin people, they are not used to it, right? Whereas in other parts of the world, that is completely normal. They even give a kiss right they even kiss on the cheek right it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman you do that right so you see how we are more aware of these cultural things uh -huh. let me let me see in this case your answers we have letter d letter d letter a letter d letter d letter d okay you see Mm -hmm. And your answers are based on personal experiences. Your answers are based on the different cultures that we have. What do you do? Now your student has to justify. And why did you choose letter D? Why not the others? And, and this becomes a nice discussion for the students. It's a nice way because the students are, again, you are promoting discussion, you're making students participate, and this can even become a nice 
um, activity for fluency practice, right? Yes, exactly. Absolutely, there is. The culture is different. Yes. Uh -huh. And that is the point of using a critical incident. Mm -hmm. To be aware of the different cultures we have around the world, right? And to be more open minded, to be more, to be more um, broad minded, right? About all these traditions and, and, and customs that we have. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, very good. Nice. Okay, so having said that, let me share with you some of the benefits. Teacher, why should I use critical incidents? Now you have a better understanding of why we should use critical incidents. But let me reinforce this. So why critical incidents? Because students can experience conflict without risk to self. What does that mean? As you could see, I ask my students to choose uh, what option or to choose one of the options there. Let me show you. So I didn't directly ask my students, what is your opinion about this? No, I asked my students to put in somebody's shoes, right? Using a hypothetical situation, what would you do if you were in that situation, right? So we play safe. Mm -hmm. You're giving the students different options, uh -huh. different solutions. They give advice, right? So it doesn't feel too personal, right? Mm -hmm. What else? A strong opinions, as I said before. A strong opinions and emotions push, push students to talk. Yes. When I show these critical incidents, my students become participative. They are really critical sometimes and they share their opinions. And sometimes they change their mind, right? And they learn a lot from other cultures. Wow, teacher, I didn't know that, right? Like today, for example, somebody shared in the chat books that Tutti Frutti in Mexico is called Basta. I didn't know that, you see, but just by sharing um, these cultural things, these activities, by including these critical incidents, we can broaden our horizons, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Nice. And finally, people like giving advice. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Just to wrap up the presentation, I would like to finish with this. I know teachers, uh, especially these weeks and during this year that is about to end, we've gone through so many things, right? We've gone through a lot. We have learned how to use digital tools, even though we were not tech savvy, we had to learn the hard way right? Um, we learned different digital resources. We learned how to prepare PPT presentations. We learned how to teach online. And all your arduous work will definitely pay off. If nobody told you this before, I will tell you this today. You are amazing. You are important. You are special. You are unique. You are kind. You are precious. You are loved. And we have these rewards here in the next picture. We have a reward for the big mistake. Let's face it, we have all made mistakes and we continue making mistakes, myself included. It doesn't matter how experienced with technology I am, I might make mistakes. I make mistakes every single day, but I learn from them. And you have to praise that. And I also have a quote here. Before I show you this, just relax, give yourself a pat on the back because you deserve it. You're making an effort to be here. If you are here or if you are watching this recording, it means that you want to change the face of education. It means that you want to learn new techniques, that you want to 
uh, apply all these activities, incorporate all these activities into your online lessons for the sake of your students. And that means a lot. That means a lot to your students and that means a lot to me as well. Finally, we do not learn from experience. We learn from reflecting on experience. And I like this quote. It's not about how many tools we use. It's about how effective and fruitful we are with them. It doesn't matter how tools you use. The most important thing is to ask yourself, what will my students get with this activity? Will my students benefit if I am applying these resources, if I am using this activity properly? Sometimes, teachers, you will see that the activities that you might use here might not work. But that's why you have to reflect on your teaching practice. What could I change? Maybe the stop the bus didn't work in my class. What went wrong? And you have to reflect on that. Something that I would like to share with you is that my, my secret, the key to becoming a reflective teacher, in my opinion, is to have a teaching journal. I always carry a book with me. And in that book, I take notes of all my teaching experiences. I document all the activities that I've done in my class. And I become more reflective and more critical of myself, right? Okay, today, maybe I forgot to use ICQs in my lesson. Concept checking questions. Perhaps I didn't use concept checking questions. Maybe my instructions were not clear. So you reflect on that, right? This session is uh, being recorded. After this session, I will watch the recording because as a lifelong learner, I want to continue improving. Yes? The fact that I am here doesn't mean that I know everything. It doesn't mean that I am learning. I learned from you. Today, I learned many things from you in the comment section. And that is the beauty of learning, that you never stop learning. There is always room for improvement. It doesn't matter how experienced you are, there is always something new to learn or to take away. Finally, a teacher is someone who leaves their job. A teacher is a people person. A teacher is an exceptional listener. A teacher is a facilitator of learning. A teacher is an eternal student, an experimenter, someone who can meet challenges, someone who has empathy for students someone who enjoys discovering new things, someone, someone who is a coach. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to uh, share with you different strategies. Uh, thank you so much for the positive feedback. And in case you want to connect with me, in case you want to follow my work, you have all these uh, websites right here. You have my email, my Facebook page, my LinkedIn, right? I upload resources on a daily basis. And yes, if you want to follow my work, if you want to connect, or if you want maybe uh, to see all the courses that I provide, you can go to my Facebook page, which is called English with Michael. Thank you so much again. And I guess you all deserve a round of applause because you've made it, you've made it to the end. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, dear Michael, for this amaz amazing presentation. Now it's time to answer some questions, Michael. Are you there, Angelita? Miss Salazar? Yes, she's here. Yes, hello, okay. hello. Okay, dear Angela, can you read the questions for Michael, please? Sure, sure. First of all, I want to thank you for all your presentation it was really amazing and all of them are really grateful. They are all saying thank you, thank you. So I'm going to say thank you, a huge thank you from all of them. And I have some questions here. The first question is from, um, I have here a question that says, what is the difference uh, between cultural identity and critical incident? Cultural, 
cultural identity and critical incident. Well, there are the actually these terms are quite different, right? So as I said before, a critical incident is basically a situation, right? Uh, as we saw before, there is a situation there and um, there is a conflict, there is a misunderstanding that students have to solve, right? And as I said, the purpose of doing that is that students can be more open-minded, that they can learn a lot from other cultures and that they can gain new insights, right? Cultural identity is quite different, right? It's how you perceive something, right? Um, for example, in some cultures, certain things might be appropriate for us. For example, some 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 teachers here in the chat box they said, uh, like teacher here in 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 my family actually I I give money as a present, whereas in other places or in other families the culture might be different, right? And uh, they might have different opinions or strong opinions about that. So cultural identity is about your beliefs, right? Your traditions, mm -hmm. how you perceive something. Yes, that would be my answer. That. Thank you so much. There is another uh, question that says, are you using culture as a strategy to motivate students to talk and be critical? Uh -huh. oh, would you mind repeating the question? Are you using sure. uh -huh. Are you using culture as a strategy to motivate students to talk and be critical? Yes, absolutely. And, and that is the purpose of using um, critical incidents. You embrace culture, right? And um, in, in my case, as I said before, I am teaching students from different um, cultures, right? China, Japan. I know from local teachers, teachers who live in Peru, it would be amazing as well to do so, right? Because remember, we are not only language teachers. We also teach culture. We teach English culture. But what about the different you know, cultures that we have around the world? Remember that the purpose of learning a language is that our students will communicate through English uh, with people from different backgrounds, right? If you, in my case, or oh, I teach students, right? And some of these students use English as a lingua franca, right? They use English to communicate with, with in this case, with business people who live in other countries, such as China, such as um, the USA. So they must learn different cultures, right? So that they can avoid these conflicts that might arise in the future. So yes, absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. Um, I have um, here another question that says, how can we apply games in large online classes? I think they also mean like speaking games in large classes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's an interesting question, actually. Uh, I teach students, um, I teach large classes. Actually, the, my classes are, in my classes, there are like 30 students, 35, 25, right? What I do in this case is I make use of the breakout rooms, right? I send my students to the breakout rooms. Now, in case you don't have that option, what I would suggest is that maybe you can ask students to, um, to use the questions, right? So those students can, in this case, ask their partners other questions so that the conversation can, can keep going, right? You can also use different websites such as Bocaru. May I share my screen? Maybe I can I can share that resource. Sure, please. Yes. So Bocaru is a website that allows students to record their voices. Now it's actually user friendly because you just have to press here and you will record your voice. Sometimes I know it's impossible to make everyone participate, especially if you have large classes. But if you do this kind of activities that you can ask your students to send these recordings to your email or through WhatsApp, because that is possible. And you can actually send the recording through a simple link. And as you can see, you have WhatsApp, you have Facebook. So it's a nice way to have evidence, right? And to make everyone participate. I do these activities with my large classes. Also as an exit ticket, when I am finishing my lesson, when I am wrapping up my class, I ask to my students three simple questions. 
So I want everyone to participate. So maybe we don't have enough time. So I ask my students to record their voices and they have to send me the link to an email, to my email, and I can check the responses. So it's amazing. Or maybe they can share their links with their partners. That can be another idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, I have another question. How, how would you um, deliver a discussion topic on this, like, um, remote teaching? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Actually, there is not much of a difference. Um, I think our teaching skills are transferable, right? So the way how we used to teach in a remote teaching in, in a physical classroom is not that different. But what I would suggest in this case is first to generate interest. Before you show to the students any activity, you have to generate interest. For example, if we have maybe a discussion about, um, let's say, languages, um, I can brainstorm, right? I can brainstorm maybe some ideas, right? They can use the chat box um you can ask them certain questions you can make the questions relatable right so that they can um provide you with some answers and use different ways of interaction right so not only talk because it's easy in a remote teaching and this has happened to me as well we can talk 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 and talk and we don't allow students to participate so change the interaction pattern why not um create maybe you can create activities in groups, maybe you can make students work in pairs, right? But creating brainstormings, creating listing activities, showing them a video, maybe using music, using feeling scales. So just by doing simple things, and of course, uh, smiling, I mean, using your personality, I think that is mo the most important thing. I must say something. Sometimes um, I prepare my classes, these classes are great, I think they are going to work, and these classes, might not go as I expected, right? But if I am physically and mentally stable, if I have maybe slept seven hours, or if I am ready, you know, I can show my personality just by showing my personality, by sharing, uh, you know, a bit of my life, sharing pictures, using visuals, that can, you can catch a student's attention easily, right? So using personality and, and personalization, they are key. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Thank you so much once again, Michael. I think I don't have more questions. Please let me take a look because I have blocked my phone. <laughs> and okay. yeah, that, that is going to be our last question. Thank you so much again. And please stay with us for a little bit more <laughs> so we can do the other part. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, dear Michael. Now it's time to know our next webinar. Please, Miss Sulamita Chukden, are you there? Yes or no, dear Suli? I am here. Yeah, okay, <laughs> great. Let's see our next webinar with Miss Sulamita Chukden. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Miss Mariela. Thanks again, uh, dear Michael, for, for your amazing presentation. In the comment section, we can find a lot of gratitude messages for you. So uh, I would like to invite you, dear teachers, for our next webinar, the next Saturday, October 30th, at the same time, 5 p.m. Our guest speaker, uh, is going to be Mr. Enrique Liñán. Mr. Liñán has taught ESOL at all levels for more than 15 years in Peru and the US. He holds a master's degree in Romance Linguistics from the University of Georgia, USA. As a teacher trainer, Enrique has presented a number of national and international events and has worked as an ELT consultant for a number of educational institutions. He is going to present the, the topic of the webinar called Keys for Teaching Speaking Skills. So teachers, don't forget, next Saturday at the same time, 5 p.m. 
we will be waiting for you. Thank you. Thank you so much, dear Suli. Recuerden, para la próxima semana tenemos a Mr. Enrique Liñán con un tema muy, muy importante. Estamos ya casi, casi para culminar nuestro ciclo de webinars. Eh, este, eh, la próxima semana vamos a tener el penúltimo webinar. Mr. Liñán, como ya lo ha mencionado, Miss Suli va a estar con todos nosotros para poder enfocarnos esta vez en, en el skill del speaking, speaking skill. Y dentro de, eh, de su presentación, vamos a revisar también algunas preguntas relacionadas al examen del Ministerio de Educación. Así que, por favor, muy atentos, ya conocen la hora, ya conocen el lugar. Así que atentos para la próxima semana, imperdible. Seguimos entonces... Llegó el momento de compartir el exit ticket con mi querido Kurt Pilela. Por ahí estás, Kurt. Yes, I'm here. Thank you, Mary. Go ahead, dear friend. Well, I don't want to start. First, I want to thank uh, dear Michael for such an outstanding presentation. The community English teachers in Peru is really grateful for that. Thank you, Michael. So here it goes, the exit ticket. HTTPS, dos puntos, dos slash, c u -t -t punto l y un slash más. Y las siguientes son con mayúscula. i e l t t X. See you next week. Estimado Kurt, te robo unos minutos para hacer una precisión aquí en el exit ticket. Recordemos que aquí completan información importante los docentes, ¿verdad? ¿Qué información, querido Kurt, es la que debe de estar bien sí o sí? Como siempre tú poniéndome en aprietos. Sí, es el momento <risa> preciso. <risa> algo lo recordar, algo lo recordar. Tú puedes, si tú puedes, los teachers pueden también. Porque tiene que llegarles, ¿a dónde les va a llegar los recursos, los materiales? A su correo electrónico, por favor, Eso, escriban bien el correo electrónico, porque están muchos diciendo, no me llega, no me llega, pues de repente no han revisado el spam también, por ahí debe de estar. Así que una chequeadita. ¿Ves cómo Escriban me bien, su ¿Ves? Sin ti no es posible. Definitivamente. El correo electrónico, teachers, por favor, a veces dejan espacios, puntos de más, y por eso no les está llegando el material. Todo el los recursos que los ponentes amablemente han compartido con nosotros, se les ha enviado su correo electrónico, revisen también el spam, por favor, el nombre debe estar correcto, porque recuerden que eh, todos los webinars eh, van sumando, van sumando horas para la constancia que se va a dar al final de este ciclo, ¿no? Y para ello el nombre debe estar correctamente escrito. Por otro lado, ojo, hay sorpresitas a veces, ¿no? En el último momento, pues, um, aparecen más teachers que me imagino a veces se conectan, se desconectan. Entonces, una forma que nosotros tenemos de poder verificar que han estado muy atentos, aprendiendo mucho de los ponentes que amablemente comparten con nosotros, es a través de las preguntas que están dentro del Exit Ticket. Entonces, nosotros estamos considerando también ellos, son tres preguntas, entendemos que por ahí nos podamos equivocar en una de ellas, pero estoy segura que las demás, porque han estado muy atentos, van a estar muy bien. Esto lo consideramos para saber que esto los está fortaleciendo y que estamos aprendiendo juntos. Bien, gracias, estimado Kurt, gracias a todo el equipo administrativo que vemos aquí a continuación. Se han sumado muchos teachers más que el día de hoy también nos están acompañando. Eh, esta es una gran familia, la familia de TIP. Esas son nuestras siglas que con mucho cariño eh, 
semana a semana organiza estos webinars para poder fortalecer nuestra formación profesional, para poder crecer juntos, aprender juntos, equivocarnos juntos, como lo dijo Michael, para poder eh, seguir dando un paso más adelante en esta eh, grandiosa profesión que hemos elegido, ser docentes. Eh, creo que el día de hoy ha sido muy significativo todo este webinar y me han encantado las palabras finales de nuestro querido Michael. De parte de todo el equipo administrativo de English Teachers in Perú, un saludo para cada uno de ustedes en sus hogares. Nos vamos a despedir, no sin antes todos encender la camarita, por favor. Ya estamos, querido equipo. Sí, ya estamos por ahí. Ya estamos con las camaritas encendidas. Bien, a nombre de toda la comunidad de English Teachers in Perú, querido Michael, una vez más el agradecimiento el día de hoy por haber estado con nosotros, por haber compartido estas valiosas estrategias y hay algo que además eh, quisiera yo rescatar, es una... Um, es un concepto personal, es una apreciación personal la que voy a dar, que más allá de todas las estrategias que has compartido con nosotros y, y, y todo eso que va a enriquecer de hecho nuestra labor pedagógica, están las palabras finales, está esa conexión emocional que existe eh, en, en el arte de enseñar, de educar, y creo que así como tú terminas con una ponencia de esta manera, haciendo esa conexión, eh, enfatizando en esa relación que debe de haber en la motivación intrínseca que se debe de, de dar a, a, al estudiante, lo haces con nosotros como maestros. Creo que esa es una gran muestra de algo que nosotros debemos también de practicar. A mí me ha enseñado mucho, me gusta mucho lo que haces, me gusta mucho ese cierre espectacular y creo que lo voy a practicar también con mis estudiantes. No voy a cerrar como siempre corriendo la hora porque a veces no la calculo bien. Creo que una palabra de aliento, que una palabra de motivación hace mucho, hace mucho para ellos. Eh, una vez más, querido Michael, realmente gracias, gracias de corazón, porque yo sé que estás full, que tienes cursos, que tienes varias cosas pendientes, pero siempre estás ahí para nosotros en la comunidad. Muchísimas gracias, Michael. Muchísimas gracias, Mariela, por esas bonitas palabras. Muchísimas gracias a todo el grupo y a todos los maestros, los profesores. Y, y sí, es totalmente cierto. A veces este, creo que me ha pasado a mí en mis inicios como docente, me enfocaba más en la presentación y no me, no me enfocaba tanto en, 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 este, en la personalidad, en cómo cierro yo mi clase, en mostrar mis emociones y compartirlo con mis estudiantes. Y eso creo que es más significativo, más memorable. ¿No? Muchísimas gracias a esta hermosa comunidad por siempre darme la oportunidad y saben que siempre cuentan conmigo. Más allá de que mis horarios a veces estén un poco <ríe> limitados, yo siempre voy a hacer el esfuerzo para, para contribuir con los demás, ¿no? para contribuir con esta hermosa comunidad. Y así, hasta hacia adelante nomás, seguimos así. Muchas gracias. Gracias, gracias querido Michael. De hecho, ya te vamos a raptar más adelante una vez más. Así que nos tienes que tener bien agendados. <ríe> gracias, Michael, por todo, a todos los teachers que han estado el día de hoy con nosotros. Se despide todo el equipo administrativo. Miss Ángela Salazar, que ha estado a cargo de la ronda de preguntas. Miss Miriam Córdoba, que ha estado a cargo de la presentación del speaker. Teacher Kurt Vilela, que ha estado a cargo del Exit Ticket, y esta vez lo ha dado muy, muy bien. <ríe> Miss eh, Beatriz Bustamante, que se encuentra con nosotros, también administradora de la comunidad, que nos ha estado acompañando el día de hoy. Miss Ulamita Chubden, que nos ha comentado qué speaker vamos a tener la próxima semana. Mr. Enrique Liñán, no se lo pierdan. Teacher Elmer Quispe Ochoa, nuestro administrador ETIP. Eh, mi Soledad Yance, que también está aquí presente, y Teacher José Ortega, que está detrás de toda la transmisión, de parte de toda la familia TIP, muchísimas gracias y que tengan un bonito domingo el día de mañana. Bye bye, teachers. <música>